morning, everyone. It's Pat from Seattle Coffee Gear, and today I have a pretty cool video that I've been excited about doing for a little bit now. We're gonna be talking about super autos, super auto grinders, oily beans, and providing a few more examples than what we've done in the past, which is just sort of show you a comparison of oily beans next to less oily beans on plates, telling you which one you can use and which one you can't use. Um, still a useful comparison because you get to see the beans side by side, so go check that video out. Um, but for today, what we're gonna talk about is what these kinds of beans can actually do to your machine. So a little bit of background, if you're not familiar, and I think some people still kind of, it's a surprise to them when they buy a Super Auto, but you really need to avoid using beans that have visible oil on them. A couple of drops or spots here and there is gonna be okay, but I have a, a bag of beans here that uh, is a good example of, these are beans that might be really good as a drip brew, maybe even really good in like uh, a, a semi-automatic espresso machine. These beans are terrible for your super automatic grinder. What happens is all of the oil on the surface of these beans, which generally comes from dark roasting beans, by the way, that's another thing that's maybe not super clear. That's usually the kind of beans that are gonna be really oily. Um, when these beans run through the grinder of your super auto, the oil that they leave behind over time can cause the grinder to seize up. Now in a standalone grinder, you can clean out the burrs. You can actually remove the burrs and sort of scrub them down. There's grinder cleaner, you can run through them. Really, you can disassemble the whole, the whole thing so that you can get them cleaned out and working again if they have issues with seizing. It can be a not fun process. It's best to maintain your standalone grinder so you don't have to do that, but you can do it. With a super automatic espresso machine, it's a lot harder to access the grinder that's down in there. So um, it's certainly not something you can do at home. And generally with these manufacturers, they're going to uh, void your warranty and they just won't perform service on machines that have this kind of damage to them in the grinder because you know they note in manuals and stuff that you shouldn't use these oily beans. And so that sort of voids your warranty. But you know, it can be hard to tell for sure. So. These are the kinds of beans you want to avoid for sure. Um, this be these beans are actually oily enough that if I opened this bag of beans, I wouldn't even put it in my Super Auto at all. Uh, I wouldn't even risk it. Again, if there's a couple of drops of oil here and there, you're probably okay to use that bag. I just wouldn't get the same coffee again. I would try to get something a little bit lighter roasted. Uh, there's also a product called Super Grinds. Note that using Super Grinds does not protect you your warranty. So keep that in mind, but Super Grinds is a way that you can, if you're a little worried that maybe you put some oily beans in, uh, you can run some Super Grinds through it and, um, and and mitigate some of the damage. So let's talk about what happens when you use beans like this. So again, um, what I have here is a grinder for these machines and they are kind of buried in the internals of your semi-automatic or super automatic espresso machine. And the reason that they're designed this way is not so much to like break on purpose or anything, it's that if you look at this machine, it's very compact to fit water tank, heating elements, milk steaming system. Um, you got your hopper up here and a grinder and have a path where the coffee can travel from the hopper down to the brew unit. It's a really, really tight operation in there. So there's just not a lot of room to allow for components that are easy to access. So the grinders for these machines look a little bit, a little something like this. Um, this is reason I have this Philips Carina here is because this is a grinder from one of these Philips models. I'm not positive if it's from a Carina, but the grinder's gonna be the same in them. And they're pretty nice grinders for what you're getting as a package in this machine. They're gonna be ceramic, um, which is a great material for grinders. And uh, they're pretty durable and they'll last a long time unless you use these oily beans. So we've got the two halves of this grinder here and we'll get you some good shots up close. Um, the interesting thing about this is when you look at it, you might think, oh, oily. So that means that these beans are going to be sticky and, and gross. They're actually just like hard plastic. Um, so you can't even scrape the beans on these grinder burrs off. They are totally caked on and totally, uh, stuck and hard. And so what that does for starters is it ruins the surface of the burr, as you can see. I mean, even if this burr worked, it wouldn't provide you a consistent grind at all because the surface is all screwed up by these, this, this, uh, this impacted hardened coffee. But the, the kind of bigger issue is that this grinder just doesn't turn. Um, these are supposed to be, this, the, the, these, this top part interacts with the gear that's run by this motor and it'll turn it. But 
there's so much oil and coffee buildup caked into the sort of bottom part of this burr that it's just not gonna turn. Um, and in fact, the passage for the grounds as they come out of the chamber is through this little hole that you can't really see in here, but it is so impacted that I can tap and we've got grounds coming out. So even if it could turn, because there's so many impacted, hardened, oily beans inside of that little hole, it wouldn't even, the grounds wouldn't even have anywhere to go. And that's kind of, there's a good chance that that's what happened to this grinder is that it got plugged up and caked up and then uh, the beans just started to get stuck in the grind chamber and then they started to, to kind of uh, harden over time like this. So this grinder completely unrepairable um, and because of the way that these parts are designed, it's just not really feasible to go in and just replace the grinder because of how they're all installed. Um, so uh, that's what these kind of beans can do to a part like this. The beans can have some effects on other parts of the system, but the grinder is what's going to cause it to fail first. Um, so you'll definitely want to avoid beans like this in your super automatic espresso machine. There's still tons of different kinds of beans out there. If you think you need espresso roasted beans, that's not really, uh, it's just a marketing term really to say that a coffee is an espresso. It may be that the coffee was roasted with the idea of brewing espresso in mind for the flavor notes, but um, you can use any kind of coffee as an espresso and a lot of them are gonna be really great. So I would recommend branching out, trying a lot of different um, medium roasts tend to be really good in super automatics because they're super balanced, but um, lighter roasts and even single origins can also be really good in these machines. Just make sure that you don't have this kind of a visible oil sheen. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that this helped under, you understand a little bit this sort of oily bean problem and, and it made it a little bit more clear what these kind of beans can do. Um, always follow your manufacturer uh, guidelines for bean usage, maintenance, all that good stuff to protect your machine and keep it uh, good under its warranty. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Feel free to drop any comments or questions that you have about this issue below and get subscribed to for more video content. Thanks. Okay.